Webster's defines IVF in vitro fertilization as a medical procedure of fertilization of an egg in a laboratory dish or test tube, specifically fertilization by mixing sperm with eggs, surgically removed from an ovary, followed by uterine implantation of one or more of the resulting fertilized eggs. This pioneering research began in the late 1800s with embryo research and development. However, the first successful birth of a non-human mammal did not occur until 1959. In 1965, the first human egg was fertilized in vitro. The first successful human IVF pregnancy was in 1975, but resulted in a miscarriage. Leslie Brown was a homemaker while her husband John was a railroad employee in Whitchurch, Bristol in the United Kingdom. Mr. and Mrs. Brown had been trying to have children for more than nine years. They were desperate to become parents. During this time, infertile women were forgotten and ignored while being considered a positive contribution to population control. In the 1950s, Dr. Robert Edwards was studying chromosomal defects and birth defects. This led him to researching stem cells, the development of cells, and the reproductive system. In 1968, while researching at the Cambridge Physiology Laboratory, Dr. Edwards recruited nurse Jean Purdy for his team. At 23, Jean was a nurse working at the Cambridge Physiology Laboratory when she met Dr. Robert Edwards. She quickly became an integral part of his small team researching embryos and in vitro fertilization. She traveled with Dr. Edwards to Oldham in Northern England to perfect the IVF technique. Jean Purdy was a pioneer on the frontier of IVF. Patrick Steptoe would be added to their team in 1969. Dr. Steptoe's expertise with the new and revolutionary laparoscopic surgery made oocyte or egg retrieval more attainable and provided further opportunities to study the in vitro fertilization process. Jean Purdy, Dr. Robert Edwards, and Dr. Patrick Steptoe would blaze a trail for a new frontier in history. In vitro fertilization while using human eggs was very controversial. Infertility was viewed as a non-clinical issue. As a result, their experiments were not seen as a treatment for a medical concern, but as experiments on humans. This led to losing support, grants, and funding for their research while being scrutinized by the press and media as a moral ethical issue. However, letters and contacts from the infertile and forgotten women encouraged them to continue their research. Jean Purdy was a pioneer as the world's first embryologist. She recorded and organized most of the data systematically for retrieval and growth. Her primary responsibilities were organizing laboratory supplies, including media preparation and testing. She was involved in patient care and present at embryo transfers and monitored growth. She would be the first person to identify the embryo as ready for transfer back into the uterus. In 1977, Leslie and John Brown decided to volunteer for a new method of in vitro fertilization. At this time, only one other woman had become pregnant from in vitro fertilization, but the pregnancy was atopic and failed. The Browns jumped into the unknown, trusting embryologist Jean Purdy, Dr. Robert Edwards, and Dr. Patrick Steptoe to help them realize their dream of having a child. They no longer wanted to be considered forgotten. Using a laparoscope, Dr. Edwards and Dr. Steptoe harvested one of Leslie Brown's eggs. They then fertilized the egg in the laboratory using her husband's sperm. Under Jean Purdy's close watch for two and a half days, the embryo developed and was ready for implantation. Jean was the first person in the world to recognize and describe the formation of the early human blastocyst, a foundational stage for embryo stem cell technology. Leslie's pregnancy progressed as normal until word got out about how she became pregnant. Journalists and reporters from as far away as Japan crowded their neighborhood and their hospital in Oldham, England. 
These reporters would share her diet, dress, and emotional state in their articles. She was forced to spend the last month of her pregnancy in the hospital because of the constant aggravation from the media. Photographers would disguise themselves as hospital janitors, boiler men, or hospital staff to get a photograph in that last month. July 25th, 1978, the first test tube baby was born by cesarean. Louise Joy Brown was born weighing 5 pounds, 12 ounces, and was crying her head off, according to Dr. Steptoe. The headlines read, Baby of the Century, it's a girl! Her name is Louise, and her parents are Leslie and John Brown, and I am pleased to present this happy family to you. I don't suppose there are many people that can say within hours of being born they were world famous. The five most important people that have been in my life has been my mum and my dad, Bob Edwards, Patrick Steptoe and Jean Purdy. Because without those five people, I wouldn't be here and nor would all the other IVF treatment babies. It was a really emotional time for mum and dad. I don't think you'd even think how manic it was. They went from a normal couple, from Bristol, not being known by anybody, to being in the spotlight. Despite their success with Louise in 1978 and the first IVF baby boy, Alistair MacDonald, born in January 1979, they lost support and the team made urgent attempts to further the IVF frontier by funding a private clinic close to Cambridge where they could work together. Jean eventually found a Jacobean manor house for sale this became the world's first IVF clinic, Bourne Hall. In 1980, pioneer Jean helped to launch fertility services there as the technical director. Her interests were clearly focused on the research and development aspects, especially those exploring viable embryo development and improved transfer procedures. She worked with more than 500 successful IVF babies before her untimely death in 1985. The Oldham Area Health Authority placed a plaque in 1981 honoring Dr. Edwards and Dr. Steptoe for their contributions to the IVF frontier. Jean Purdy was left off the plaque, even though Dr. Edwards protested and requested her name be added. This was rectified in 2019. When her name was added to the plaque at Bourne Hall, Jean was co-author on 26 academic papers about IVF between 1970 and 1985. Her contribution was recognized by the fellow IVF pioneers, Bob Edwards and Patrick Steptoe, at a lecture to an audience of specialists on the 20th anniversary of IVF. Dr. Robert Edwards announced there were three original pioneers in IVF, not just two. Jean's legacy continues due to her dedication to IVF treatment. 300,000 IVF children have been born in the UK since the birth of Louise with over 20,000 conceived at Bourne Hall. In 2010, Dr. Robert Edwards received the Nobel Prize in Medicine for the development of in vitro fertilization. Jean's legacy and contribution to the success of IVF must be remembered. She's a pioneer in this field. She, she helped start this entire field of human IVF. She developed procedures for cultivating or culturing as we like to call it the fertilized human eggs and you, you look backwards in time and, and she was right at the start of it along with Steptoe and along with Edwards they were equally responsible all three of them. Jean Purdy was one of three scientists whose groundbreaking work led to the birth of the first IVF baby in 1978. There are over five million IVF babies now um, and I suppose I'm part of their history. Hi, B. Fast colors and promises. How to be brave. Jean helped turn the IVF frontier into a robust medical treatment. As a pioneer on the frontier of IVF, Jean Purdy broke barriers in medicine and helped blaze a trail for the forgotten. All of my doubt suddenly goes away some.